Coming up on iOS today, Rosemary Orchard and I get a little silly because it's time to talk about silly games for iPhone and iPad. Stay tuned. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is iOS Today with Rosemary Orchard and Micah Sargent, episode 701, recorded Tuesday, April 30th, 2024, for Thursday, May 2nd, 2024. Silly games for iPhone and iPad. Hello and welcome back to iOS Today, the show where we talk all things iOS, tvOS, HomePod OS, Watch OS, iPad OS, Vision OS, and all of the other OSs Apple has on offer. This is the show where, as we always say, we help you make the most of your devices uh, by telling you about the features, the settings, the apps that you should be getting uh, to make your device soar through the clouds of amazingness. Sure, we'll go with that. I am one of your hosts, Micah Sargent. And I am Rosemary Orchard and very excited and ready to get silly, Micah. It's been a very serious couple of weeks. So uh, yeah, why not have some fun? Time to get silly. Yes, um, I thought this would be a great time for just some, look, there are lots of, of different games out there. There are games that are uh, are you know, about strategy. Uh, a lot of people are playing or have played at some point, uh, you know, Baldur's Gate, which is a, a really intense game that has lots of different decisions that you have to make. And maybe you'd want to take a break from all of that stuff. You want to step back from the strategy table or the role playing game and just have a little bit of fun. And so I thought we could kick things off this week with some silly games for iPhone and iPad. Uh, so with that, let's hear from Rosemary, who has a couple of games uh, that kind of fall into a similar boat. Uh, or I guess it's not really a boat. Tell us about it. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe it's not a boat. It's, it's you know, similar kinds of transportation systems because uh, there are two games that I love. Um, and there's actually two versions of each of these games, uh, just so folks know. So the first game I would like to talk about uh, is Mini Metro. So Mini Metro is available on the App Store for $4.99. Or if you have Apple Arcade, you can download Mini Metro Plus, uh, which is part of Apple Arcade, and you don't have to pay for it. Um, so I have the option of both. I've chosen to open Mini Metro uh, Plus here because I, I did buy Mini Metro before I uh, got onto Apple Arcade. Um, and so if you pop into the play uh, option, then after you have set things up and done the tutorial, then you'll uh, be given a, a couple of different cities, which as you progress, gets easier or harder uh, depending on your point of view. Now, there are some options with uh, the uh, settings. So you can play Mini Metro on normal mode, extreme mode, endless mode, or creative mode. So normal mode, essentially, you want to create a train network where your trains don't end up being too overcrowded. Um, and on extreme mode, you cannot move tracks. So you can't, you know, do some demolition and rebuilding. Endless mode um, is just, there's no overcrowding. You just keep going. Um, and on creative mode, you can actually uh, choose where to place your stations. So uh, I'm just going to open this up into Paris and uh, we can get started. So we can see I've got three stations here. Um, and I am just going to start by uh, creating uh, some different uh, tracks here between these two stations. Uh, there we go. So I've got three stations on my map and uh, I'm just going to attempt to, uh, you know, build build a metro system, ideally one that's efficient, one that means that I don't end up with too much overcrowding and people end up where they want to go. Um, so as time goes on, it gets more complicated. You get more people. You have to add bridges um, or tunnels uh, to go over things and under things. And uh, yeah, you'll you'll end up, uh, you know, having to extend your metro to go further. So there we go. I can see that that metro, uh, there's another station that has popped up across the river. And I have just dragged the end of my metro line to go there. So I now have one very long metro line um, going uh, all the way around and two quite short metro lines, which maybe isn't the most efficient uh, system, but hey, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, and nobody ever said I was an actual city planner. So, you know, <laughs> it, it doesn't matter if I get it completely wrong, but I am going to uh, use this as an opportunity here to uh, uh, 
remove some green metro and add uh, some more blue metro because that seems like a more efficient way of doing things. Uh, this is probably not very efficient for the people living in Paris. I apologize to all of those people who are used to having a good public transport network, which I've just ruined for them. Um, but, you know, that's what happens when you let a Brit build your, your uh, system for you. So this is Mini Metro. Uh, it's based on uh, subway systems and undergrounds um, and, you know, public transport in general. There is, however, also the option of playing mini motorways. So uh, for those of you in the US, I am given to understand a lot of your cities don't really have a great public transport infrastructure. So, you know, mini metro may be something that feels a little bit weird and wild to you. And for those folks, there is mini motorways, uh, again, available for 4 99 from the App Store or for uh, free for mini motorways plus as part of um, the uh, Apple Arcade plan, if you're paying for that, which is 4.99 a month um, and uh, mini motorways is uh, essentially you have to build motorways uh, to connect things up um, and for some reason uh, I'm not having a uh, great moment because things are not drawing on my iPad, which is not great. But uh, you, I have a superstore uh, of some kind and I have some houses and I need to try and connect those uh, up. There we go. Now I can start drawing. Um, Oops, uh, this is not going to be very efficient. How about I do that? And then maybe I can get rid of uh, some of this over here. That's better. Um, and uh, yeah, that's uh, a little tricky at times to try and get your road infrastructure just right. But you never know. You can always, uh, you know, learn and improve on these things later. Um, and uh, yeah, so mini, mini motorways works much, much the same as mini metro. Um, Instead of dragging uh, lines to move them, you have an eraser tool, uh, which you get by tapping on the bin. Um, and both of these apps do have a daily challenge because they're they're silly and fun. So why wouldn't you want to join in every day um, and, you know, take take opportunity to enjoy and see how you stack up against other people? Or you can just keep it to yourself because... You know, you don't have to play against somebody else. You don't have to get all that competitive. That said, I may have to see if I can beat Micah later. <laughs> we shall see. Um, the first one that I want to talk about that is definitely a silly game is a little game called Dumb Ways to Die 4. And Dumb Ways to Die 4 is the latest version of Dumb Ways to Die. Um, you play this little bean and your job in the game is to keep your the bean safe so it says welcome to tumble field this place is looking a bit boring let's play some games to fix this up so you kind of like play these challenges to improve upon your space now if you are listening and not watching as many of you are uh, i should point out that there is a cursor that appears to be covered with a red substance that may or may not be blood um this is called dumb ways to die so it says tap here and let's go on an awesome dumb ways adventure so in order to roast the marshmallows i need to hold and put the marshmallows into the fire. Ooh, but here's the thing, folks. The marshmallows are on top of the uh, antler hat that the character is wearing. So I think if I had kept it going too much, then it could have caught my bean on fire. Uh, next is a pirate ship game where the, uh, the, the person that's on the boat I have to kind of move my phone back and forth in order to keep the person on the boat. Oh no, I don't have very much time. I need to connect these wires. Oh no, I ran out of time and it caught the tree on fire. Uh, so I lost one point because I didn't uh, do that. Now, this is a game that you download for free uh, in the App Store. So as you can imagine, it does have some free to play mechanics. That means that you will occasionally get things like energy. Uh, you will be able to add an extra life by watching an ad, that kind of thing. But you don't have just like with any free to play game, you don't have to do that to keep playing it. You can also just wait a period of time. Now it says we can use the coins that we won to fix this place up so I can start to build. And oh look, I've got enough coins to buy a giant tree. And so now a giant tree appears in my beans little area of the forest. It says amazing work. Keep on playing those games to earn coins and get this place looking its best again. Uh, here I am shaking the cola by moving my finger back and forth. These are just kind of little mini games that make use of the different aspects of the uh, iPhone 
And now I am rocking my phone back and forth to uh, take a wrecking ball and wreck through a brick wall. Then I need to polish off this helmet to reveal what appears to be an alien. And the alien, uh, yay, I did it. I actually got through. And then, oh, connect the wires. Oh, dear. And now we're going faster this time. I can do it this time. Whew. Okay, we got the tree lit. And we got uh, 576 points for that. Ooh, now we're playing baseball, which, yikes. Boom. Uh, boom. And boom. This time we are smacking some sort of... I don't even know what they are. Uh, green things that when they're hit, they light. And then now I'm seeing an ad. So again, you will have free to play mechanics like uh, ads that pop up that ask you to interact with the screen. And I can go ahead and skip this by hitting the two up oh, and see sometimes they do this. They make you tap and it makes stuff pop up instead. Do not like that. Oh, I'm supposed to hug the bear? The bear just ate me. Owie. Uh, so I don't know how I was supposed to defeat that bear. Um, take a photo of a moose. Boom. That's great. I just had to tap while the moose was in the screen. And I did that. And then, oh, whack the nails into a board. And that I was able to do just by tapping on the screen. I'm going to, after this, we'll, we'll get done with it. Uh, but I just want to kind of show the different types of little mini games that you can play. And that really makes this not just a silly game, but one that is perfect for idle time because there are all these little indications. Oh, no. I don't know what I'm supposed to do here. Oh, I make the flower yellow. I didn't do it, I don't think. Oh, good, I did. I guess it was enough. And I gave the flower to a bear, and the bear was happy. And now I have to catch these apples as they fall. And basically that involves, oh, darn it. I didn't do it in time, and I indeed did die. All right, that is going to be enough. I will quit uh, to go back to the main screen. And I've got 1,037 coins that I can use to build different things, like a road to the big tree. You get the idea. As you play different games, you you earn coins that help you build out your little field. And you can, of course, uh, create new or choose new characters and add uh, outfits to them and that kind of thing. Uh, that is a little silly game called Dumb Ways to Die. This is version four. All right, Rosemary, back to you for your next silly game. Well, thanks, Micah. Uh, mine's a little bit kind of reminiscent of a blast from the past. I'm sure most of us will remember the era of the Nokia. Uh, the Nokia 3310 to be specific. The one that you could run over with, you know, like the biggest juggernaut going and it, that phone would still work. And not only would that phone still work, you could play Snake on it. And Snake is a great game. It's a classic for many reasons. And Snakeio is uh, a new version of the game, which is available on a lot of platforms and on the web. And there's also Snakeio Plus available on the App Store um, in Apple Arcade. So just like uh, many Metro, many motorways, there is Snakeio and Snakeio Plus. Um, so you can get uh, either the uh, Apple Arcade version or the App Store version as you choose. Now, Snakeio is a little bit different uh, to the original Snake. You are not limited to just up, down, up, down, and you can uh, go over yourself um, as a snake. So uh, here I am. I've started off as a really tiny snake, but I've got some hearts for eyes, so that's pretty good. Um, and I'm just going to go around and try and pick up a bunch of food. And as I pick up food, I will get bigger. Now, there are other people here who may attempt to eat me. Um, and also, if I run into them, I could kill, I could uh, die. But if I run into somebody's head, then just like in Snake 2, uh, you can actually uh, defeat that person and then you get uh, points from uh, their snake. Uh, so there are uh, edges on this map. This is not an infinite map. So I've just found one of the edges at the bottom and I'm going to do my absolute best not to uh, just go straight into it as I go. <laughs> um, but uh, as you can see, I'm getting larger um, and uh, yeah, it's 
there we go. And I just uh, went into another snake and, and died. Um, which, you know, that, that happens, um, especially if you're trying to talk on a podcast whilst also demonstrating. Mm-hmm. It's difficult to uh, do two things at once. Um, so I'm actually just going to tap on next uh, a second. I've unlocked a new skin. Um, and I'm just going to show Fox uh, some of the settings which are available because obviously you've got the options to turn music and, and sound effects on and off um, and to show or hide display names. Um, but under controls, there are a few different options um, that you can use. So there's left-handed or right-handed controls. I'm right-handed, so I've chosen the right-handed controls. And then there are three different ways of controlling the snake. So there's a joystick, which is essentially you get a little bubble on the screen, which if you're watching the video, is kind of like the bubble uh, of where my head is um, on, on screen right now. So there's a little circle and you, you move your finger around in that circle to control the direction the snake goes. Um, there's arrow, which is there are some arrows, you tap them, and the snake goes in those directions. And then there's follow, which is my preferred method, where you just tap anywhere on the screen, and that's where the snake's going to go. Um, so you can, you know, play with these different ones to uh, get different effects. Um, and as you go, you will find that you unlock new skins um, and other things. Uh, there's also a daily challenge every day. I am working on trying to get Macchiato as a snake skin uh, because Macchiato is a little brown cat with white socks and a little black top hat, which kind of looks almost like an Apple Watch. Um, so yeah, oh, that's, uh, that's, that's yeah. what I'm aiming for. Um, you know, I haven't got, I, I, I haven't got there yet. Um, or maybe I have actually, uh, let's, uh, let's just find out and see. No, nope, no, I haven't unlocked that one yet, which is a shame, but you know, uh, as it is, I'll keep playing Snakeyo so, yeah. and maybe I will pass the daily challenge and, uh, get some bonus skins and so on. Oh my gosh, the snake is huge. Wow. That's, that's scary. Okay. Well, I'm going to try to not die. And, uh, Micah, I believe you have one more option for us. I do have one more option. So this next option is a little game that is available in Apple Arcade. And when it comes to silly, I think this game might take the crown. Uh, This is a game that is called, in all caps, WHAT THE GOLF? Um, What the Golf is a fun little game that lets you play golf, but it's not in the way that you might think. So... Uh, One thing, first and foremost, that I like about this is that on the iPhone, it plays uh, in portrait mode, which is kind of nice. You don't have to hold your phone in landscape. And it's quite simple. You tap anywhere on the screen to kind of start the process of, of hitting the golf ball. And your job as it is as is the case in golf is to get the ball into the hole. So here, um, I will sort of put my finger on the screen and then pull back. And the farther you pull back from the place where you put down your finger determines how powerful the swing, so to speak, is. And then you let go when you're ready to get it into the hole. Now, it starts out seeming like normal golf, but as you continue to play, things are gonna change. Uh, Here, we see that there are some obstacles, which is that there are some cats in the way. So I need to be careful not to hit the cats as I try to get it into the hole. I was able to do that. Now in this new one, not only are there cats at play, but there are also um, what appear to be buckets full of probably oil or something or gasoline. So I wanna try to ricochet the ball off of the rock here. And I didn't quite get it in one, so we'll get it in two. And boom, cool cats, we were able to. Now, in this uh, version I am playing, there's not a ball anywhere. And so I don't necessarily know what's going to happen. Uh, I do know what's going to happen because I've played this before, but pretend I don't know what's going to happen. So I'm going to go ahead and put my finger down and pull back. And as I let go... (gasps) It's the golf club this time that is the ball. So I am kind of moving the golf club along uh, to try to get it not into the hole, but to hit the, uh, the, the flag. Now I'm actually playing, there's a person on screen as opposed to just being a ball. So I'm gonna pull back to try to hit this ball. And as I let go, what in the world? It's the person that's flying through the air, not the golf ball. So I'm going to try to get the person to hit the flag. And then now I'm looking and there's not a golf ball. There's not a golf club. There's not a person. Instead, I am faced with a house inside of a fence 
and a, a bunch of cars that are driving up the side of a mountain. And so, okay, um, I don't even know which way to pull, but I think I'm going to pull to the bottom left corner of the screen. Oh, the uh, power indicator suggests that it's the... <gasps> Yes, it is indeed the house that is the ball this time. Uh, so I'll wait for some cars to fly by, and then I will move my house toward the uh, end goal here. And let's see if we can get it on this one. Boom, home in one, it says, because indeed it was a home and not a hole. Now, this one seems oddly normal. Uh, there is just a golf ball, and there is a hole. Oh, you tricky tricksters. They're moving the uh, actual hole. It just moved on its own. Now I've got a golf club and a golf ball. What is actually going to move this time? Well, let's see. Oh, it is indeed the ball. But this time I've got a pipe that the ball rolls down into. Now it's feeling a lot like mini golf. And this officially starts the true game because we have gotten past the part where it's just teaching you how to play uh, to the actual game. And we are here in the golf lab. Oh, dear. Let's see. And it's giving pinball a little bit as we move through this space into a new area. And we want to make it into, oh, come on, the hole and we've done it now we're back and in this case we're not playing with um a golf ball we're playing with the actual hole itself and we're going in reverse we're trying to get inside of the whole hole instead of the other way around um that is what the golf it is incredibly silly and it is kind of what inspired me to want to do this episode on silly billy uh games Folks, there are a lot of silly games out there. And so I am curious to hear what silly games you like to play. Uh, you can email us, iOS today at twit.tv, with the silly games you like playing. Uh, because I am curious what else you might find that is worth uh, a couple of a couple of jokes, a little bit of haha, -ha, and a lot of enjoyment as we find in the games that we mentioned today. Uh, moving along, we actually do have some news this week. I mentioned that news uh, is something that we're kind of moving away from because of the way that we publish the show, but occasionally things line up. And this week, things did line up because this episode will publish. You'll be listening to this, unless you are a member of Club Twit, twit.tv slash Club Twit, uh, or watching the YouTube live. Um, this episode will publish on Thursday, May 2nd, and... In just a few days from the publishing date, there's going to be an Apple event. Uh, Apple has announced that there is an event taking place on May 7th. Now, the event is kind of, um, let's see, how do we, it is uh, sort of skewed for the East Coast this time instead of the West Coast. So it starts at 7 a.m. Uh, Pacific. And I... We'll definitely be covering the event live. We will see if Leo will be joining me to cover the event live. But in any case, uh, do tune in on Tuesday, May 7th to watch coverage of that Apple event at 7 a.m. Now, uh, if we could go back to that page, Kevin. Um, so I want to describe this artwork if you haven't seen it. Uh, many of us in the press and elsewhere uh, received an invite to watch an event uh, online. And so that is kind of the larger majority of people. Apple's not holding an in-person event in Cupertino. Um, this event is, uh, or, or the artwork rather for this event shows a hand holding an Apple pencil. And there's some kind of artwork in the background that make up the Apple logo. Now, along with the artwork in the background that makes up the Apple logo, if you go on Instagram and some other places, there's actually kind of a video artwork. And each of the pieces shows an Apple logo rendered in different kinds of artistic styles. We believe that this event is going to be an iPad event where Apple will announce new hardware for iPads. 
I'm kind of curious, Rosemary, any early thoughts on what we can expect uh, from this iPad, well, in theory, this iPad event? Well, uh, I'm hoping we're going to see some iPads. That would be pretty <laughs> cool. There's definitely an Apple Pencil involved there. So I feel like we may see um, a, a upgrade slash, you know, mm. change perhaps uh, to our existing Apple Pencils. Uh, you know, we had a new one not that long ago, which um, is very similar to the Apple Pencil 2, but you can sort of pull off the end and plug it into a USB-C to charge it. Um, so, yeah, I'm hoping we're going to see purple. Um, I'm, I'm hearing rumors about colored iPads and there's definitely color in the logo and I'm seeing some purple in there. So I could be com not completely off base, perhaps. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know exactly what it is we're going to see. Um, I have an M1 iPad Pro, uh, which or actually I think it's an M2 iPad Pro um, and uh, it's great. And I don't feel like there's anything that I'm missing. So I think that's what they're going to have to uh, to do. We may see, however, something like a landscape camera because most people will use their iPad uh, when they're in landscape. And it's there's only one of the iPads right now that actually has the camera on the longer bezel rather than the shorter bezel uh, for that. So I don't know. I'm hoping we're going to see that, but I'm not sure. What about you, Micah? Any guesses? Yeah, so I, I also would like to see that. Um we are rumored to see a hardware upgrade all around um, with these new iPads. It's unclear exactly, as it always is, which iPads specifically uh, we'll see at the event. But I know that Apple is, well, I shouldn't say no. I, According to all of the rumors, Apple is working on its version of the generative AI systems and is hard at work on that. So with that comes the desire to do a lot of on-device um, on device generation and processing, which may mean that Apple needs to upgrade and update the uh, chip that's inside of these devices, which suggests that we could possibly see the M4 in an iPad before we see it in any of Apple's Macs. That will be fascinating to me uh, and will kind of point to the expectations that we might have when it comes to WWDC, where Apple announces all of its new software and many of the new features that it plans to bring in the next iteration. So. That will be something we uh, will be keeping an eye on as we move forward. Uh, again, be sure to tune in on May 7th to watch our coverage at 7 a.m. If I've got bags under my eyes at that time, you'll have to forgive me, but uh, we'll make it happen. All right, moving right along, uh, there was some other news this week, and luckily it is tied to a uh, kind of well, a shortcuts corner request, but we'll wait for the music um, because this is still in the news segment. Um, many people, quite a few more than initially I thought were going to be impacted, were impacted by a password reset uh, across Apple devices. I now we talked about this on on Ask the Tech Guys over the weekend, but essentially a number reported having their Apple ID password reset where when they tried to log into their devices, they were presented with uh, the need to change their password. And Apple has continued to refrain from explaining what that situation is all about, what's going on, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so we don't really know what exactly happened, but you may have been presented with this need to change your password. And for the people who did, if they had generated um, app specific passwords, those also had to be regenerated, which is really frustrating and would potentially take a long time. Um, I know. I get annoyed by having to do new app specific passwords, uh, but it happens and you got to do what you got to do. And so if you were uh, presented with this issue, it's okay. Uh, you'll get through it. But Josh has written in in response to this and says, hello. 
I'm not sure if this is possible, but I was wondering with the Apple reset password attacks going on, if it was possible to create a shortcut or automation that would automatically decline the password reset request to prevent from accidentally clicking accept. And now I, I want to mention too that in this case, Josh is talking about something that we talked about, I think a couple of episodes ago on Ask the Tech Guys, where there's a new uh, I think it was Krebs on security who reported about this. Uh, oh, it was on Tech News Weekly that I talked about this, but um, it's a, a new kind of attack vector where somebody tries to gain access to your account by continually spamming your phone, asking for you to reset the password. And so the prompt comes up and 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 up over and over again in the hopes that you'll accidentally say yes at which point, because you've just been uh, prompted that many times, you're aware that something's happening. Those bad actors, as they're called, reach out to you, pretending to be Apple and say, hi, your account is currently under attack. We want to fix this in order to verify that you are you and not the attacker. Please give us the code that just popped up on your device. Of course, if they have access to that code, they can use that code to then gain access to your account because they're not actually Apple support. They're the bad actors. So very bad. And then also accidentally clicking except when you mean to click decline over or tap decline over and over and over again uh, is something to you know be worried about. So I believe that's back called to MFA fatigue. There you go. MFA, MFA fatigue. fatigue. Uh, and so this is um, this is the rest of, of what the person is asking. Josh says, I'm a Club Twit member and enjoy numerous podcasts on Twit. Thank you for your support. Um, and then also, Josh has included uh, a photo for the pet tax. Uh, Josh says, this is my dog, Leo. He is a Havanese. He'll be four years old in June. Uh, just to note, I did not name him. He was named by his previous owner. Thanks, Josh. So yes, Josh did not name all oh, little Leo after Leo. I Leo already had a name. So Look cute. at the little curious face. Oh my goodness. So cute. <laughs> so cute. Uh, so here is, uh, again, the question. Is it possible to create a shortcut or automation that would automatically decline password reset requests to prevent from accidentally clicking accept? Can you automate screen taps, Rosemary? So technically, you can actually automate screen taps. And this is something that every so often you'll see somebody going around doing like a, a video on social media, like, oh my gosh, you didn't know this feature was built into your iPhone. Nobody knew this. And it's an accessibility feature where um, under the settings uh, on your phone, if you go under accessibility, um, then there is the options under touch. And I've forgotten exactly where this is. Um, I believe it's under uh, assistive touch. There we go. You can create a new gesture. Um, and if you knew exactly where the button was, you would be able to, you know, record that and, you know, uh, call it something. Uh, so I'm just going to call my new gesture cancel. And now I have a custom gesture, which you can trigger through a number of things like the action button on your iPhone 15 Pro. Um, you can trigger it, um, you know, through um, various things. But the problem with this is, uh, A, you've got to set it up. Um, and B, it's not necessarily going to be 100% reliable. And if you trigger it when something else pops up on your screen, that's going to be a problem. Mm. So what I would recommend for folks, um, apart from the obvious, if somebody is asking for the uh, code to log into your Apple ID, um, no, the the answer to this question is no. There there is no other answer to that question. Apple don't need it. Uh, Apple will not want it. Apple want you to like deauthenticate from devices when they uh, start looking at them. If they like have to take it behind the Genius Bar or something, they're not going to want that. But the other thing I would recommend doing is there are some uh, security settings, um, which I, I'm just going to um, quickly uh, go into my uh, face ID settings, where you can enable things like stolen device protection. Um, so under settings, face ID and passcode or touch ID and passcode, if you've got an older device that's running the, the newer iOS, um, then uh, under stolen device protection, you can enable this uh, always. So it means that um, a delay is going to be required to change security settings, which also affects things like changing passwords. And that is honestly what I would recommend here. Um, automation sounds great. Um, 
it's going to unfortunately most likely end up in a, a world of problems for you, sadly, because you'll you'll end up like trying to log in uh, on your your Mac, which, you know, you rebooted it and it's installed an update and it wants to reauthenticate with your Apple ID. And then every, every request is being canceled on all of your other devices or something like that. It, it gets messy quite quickly. Um, so I would recommend turn on stolen device protection. Remember, if somebody wants uh, the code from uh, Apple over, uh, you know, from anything that's not, you know, the Apple authentication boxes that pop up uh, on your devices, then the, the answer is no. Um, and uh, yeah, try and stick to it that way. They've got some good devices, uh, good guides for stolen uh, uh, device protection um, and um, security settings in general on the Apple support website, which we can link to. But yeah, just try try not to uh, go go too nuts on this and try not to panic as well. And if you are uh, running into this problem, I, I'm just going to say something because I feel like I've run into this problem before. I had an iPad. It, I wasn't using it anymore. Um, you know, I'd lent it to my mom to try out and she she hadn't really gelled with it. So I'd, I'd taken it back and I signed in with my Apple ID and I just kind of left it somewhere and left it plugged in. Um, or, you know, it wasn't plugged in all the time, but every so often I'd plug it in. And funnily enough, shortly after like plugging it in, I'd get like a bunch of like requests to like authenticate with my Apple ID and things like that. It was because I had some devices that were mine under my Apple ID that I didn't actually need on my account. Um, and uh, on Apple's, uh, you know, under the settings, um, if you go onto your Apple ID and iCloud, then you can actually uh, look at the list of your devices and you can see, um, you know, I'll just uh, pop up my list of devices here. I have a humongous list of devices. Yes, I have a ridiculous number of HomePods uh, floating around, mm -hmm. but, you know, that's, you know, that's to be expected for me. Um, but I've got my Apple Watch Series 8 here. That's not mine anymore. I should actually remove this from my account. And I, I do know that this is one that I'm good to remove from my account. By the way, I left it there when I spotted it uh, a couple of days ago because I knew we were going to talk about this today. Um, so, uh, yeah, you can remove these from your account. So make sure you go in and clean that up because that could also end up triggering uh, requests for things that you don't want um, or need. Um, and also, if you have given uh, a device to somebody else, you don't want it uh, actually being locked to your Apple ID, uh, you know, behind the scenes. So make sure to yes. tidy that up too. It's always good to audit that screen and many other parts of, of iOS just to keep, make sure that, yeah, you've got your true devices and you don't have any of the others. Uh, there are times too where if you've got devices that you aren't using that are tied to your Apple ID and some of the newest features that have come to, especially iCloud, Apple ID accounts, um, they won't work because you it, it requires that all of the devices logged in with your Apple ID need to be on the latest version of the software or a later version of the software. And so while you're trying to move through that process, it will stop you and say, you've got to either remove this device or update it. So, you know, removing that ahead of time is a helpful way to not have to worry about that. All righty, I can hear the music. It's time for Shortcuts Corner. Whoa, welcome back to Shortcuts Corner, the part of the show where you write in with your shortcuts requests and Rosemary Orchard, our shortcuts expert, provides a response. Uh, this Shortcuts Corner request comes from Michael, who writes, Hi, Mike and Rosemary. I've been watching iOS today since the beginning and always amazed at Rosemary's ability to get shortcuts to do things. Amen. Me too. My challenge is I am trying to leverage Safari's profile modes to segregate my work activities from my personal activities. However, there are some basic features that are either missing or not obvious on how to set up. I have set up a focus mode for when I am at the office, set by location. I have also set up focus filters to set the profile or tab group on Safari to my work profile. However, I can't set up a different home page in Safari. Is there a way in shortcuts to set my home page when Safari is set in my work profile? Thanks for keeping this awesome show going. Michael. So a custom home page for uh, Safari whenever you are using Safari profiles. I could have sworn that was part of the. Well, we'll hear from Rosemary. Yeah, 
So um, I'm just going to start with uh, a couple of the bits of the background that folks might need to know to, to catch up with what Josh is doing here. Because um, as you said, uh, Micah, you, you think some things were part of profiles uh, in Safari. So if you go into the settings on your iPhone, so the settings app, and then you open Safari, and then you scroll down, you can create a new profile. So I'm going to create a blue one. I'm going to give a little briefcase, and I'm going to call it uh, work. Um, and so my favorites, I can choose uh, which favorites um, I'm going to use and I can set my new tabs. And this is where you might see something that not everybody else sees because what I've done is I've installed Safari extension. Now I might be teasing a little bit for our next show, um, but I've installed a Safari extension called Momentum. And so I can say that I would like um, to open new tabs with Momentum um, when I I, um, you know, uh, start a, a new tab here. Um, so now I have my personal uh, profile and my work profile. Um, and, um, you know, I can manage which extensions are available in um, in different profiles as well as a side note. So you can enable different things in different places. Um, so I have set that up. And now if I go into the settings again and I go to focus and I'm going to use podcasting here rather than work because I'm in my podcasting focus right now. So just to be clear, I'm just going to um, open Safari and I'm just going to create an, uh, a new tab and uh, it's uh, popped open uh, that one for me. But now I scroll back down inside of my settings and I set my filter type to profile and I choose my profile and I set my profile to work. So I've added this uh, work uh, filter um, to this. And now if I create a new um, uh, tab, I have used Momentum. Um, so Momentum is a, a free app. It's available um, as an extension on uh, a lot of platforms. And there's a whole bunch of things that you can um, customize and enable or disable um, depending on uh, which platform you're on and, and so on and so forth. You can have like to do's in here and so on. It can show you the time. Um, it can show you the time as a Pomodoro technique, uh, Pomodoro timer if you want. Um, but uh, now uh, if I were to uh, leave my podcasting focus mode, which I'll just close Safari um, and I will turn podcasting off for just a moment and open a brand new Safari. There we go. And open a new tab. Ta-da! It's using my default start page. Um, so that's how you can do that just using settings. Okay. I'm just going to re-enable my podcasting focus mode because uh, I uh, have uh, to uh, make sure that I don't have too many things going crazy. And um, there we go. And now I am uh, going to, yes, I'll switch to work. That's fine. Um, so I'm going to show folks another way to do this because you may not have a Safari extension like Momentum, or you may not want to use a Safari extension like Momentum, which adds a, a new tab page. But there is a way that you can do this. And I have a little Safari icon in my dock. It's a little different to most people's Safari icon because mine is a black outline with a little purple Safari inside of it. And when I tap on that, it opens DuckDuckGo. And the way it does that is this is a shortcut. Um, and so what you can do in shortcuts is you can create a shortcut which will get your focus mode. So I'm going to start by just adding a get focus mode and I'm in the middle of creating a new shortcut uh, uh, here. So get current focus mode. Okay. And then what we could say is if da, 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 da. so if our current focus mode, um, and what I can do is change it to the name and I can say if current focus mode is podcasting, then I can use Safari's actions. Now, Safari has a whole bunch of really cool shortcuts actions. I'd highly recommend going and checking them out because they've got things like finding bookmarks and opening bookmarks or listening to the page. So you can have Safari uh, shortcuts read a Safari page out loud. Um, things can be added to reading lists. You can get things from your reading list. You can create uh, tab groups. You can close tabs. Um, and you can create new tabs, all sorts of things. But there is also um, the option to open a specific view, which I saw literally just a moment ago, and now it's gone. There it is under Safari. So I'm going to open a view. So if I'm in my podcasting focus mode, then I would like to open a view, and I'm going to say that I would like to open the start page. And if I'm not in my podcasting focus mode, then I would like to create a new tab. Whoops. Um, and I will 
uh, just uh, pop that open. Oops, not create a new tab. I am having a brain blank day, one of those <laughs> things, um, where um, I'm just going to open a URL. Okay, and so this would be not my current focus mode, which would be helpful in many circumstances, but not in this case. I'm going to open DuckDuckGo.com. There we go. So now I'm just going to rename this to Safari Test. Ta-da. Um, and then I'm going to add this to my home screen. Okay, so um, you can actually change the icon at this point. So I'll just do that. Um, and I will just say, okay, go ahead and add it. It just got added as new shortcut four. That's fine. But if I tap on this, then I just need the first time to give it some permissions. There we go. It's opened um, a the, the tab overview page. But if I just quickly pop back and I'll just edit the shortcut um, to say, hey, if the name is work, then open the start page because it was podcasting before. Um, and so now if the name is work, it's going to open the start page. Otherwise, it's going to open dot, dot, go in a new tab. And that is how I would do that using shortcuts because that way you can have um, a really nice, and I don't know why this is all in dark mode right now, uh, but apparently it is. Um, so I've got a little clash there maybe with some extensions, but that's how you can do that in shortcuts um, by just giving yourself a little different home screen um, uh, icon for Safari, which is my preferred method to do things. Like my my default one, uh, which I have in the corner down here, it just opens a new Dr. Go tab every time because it's amazing how many times you'll open this really cool looking thing that somebody on Instagram shared with you or something like that. And by reopening Safari, you get confronted with that thing that was shiny that maybe you would like to buy again. But by opening a new tab, your brain forgets all about it and you move on with life without buying the thing unnecessarily. So I personally like to have a uh, Safari icon on my home screen. It lives in my dock that opens whatever it is that I would like. And you can customize that with your focus mode or you can use a Safari extension like Momentum and profiles to change the new tab option inside of the settings for Safari. Beautiful. And folks, that is going to bring us to the end of this episode of iOS Today. If you have Shortcuts Corner requests, you can get those to us by emailing us, iOSToday at twit.tv. Uh, this, of course, is also the place where you can send us questions, comments, concerns, etc. cetera, iOSToday at twit.tv. Now, if you are listening to this show and you have this thought of, man, I really wish I could watch this show, uh, we do offer a video version of this show to those of you who are Club Twit members. The audio version is available to all. The video version and the no ad audio version is available to club twit members twit.tv slash club twit it's just seven dollars a month to join the club and when you do you get access to every single twit show with no ads you also gain access to the exclusive twit plus bonus feed that has extra content you won't find anywhere else behind the scenes before the show after the show special club twit events get published there as well as access to the members only discord server a fun place to go to chat with your fellow club twit members and also those of us here at twit on top of all of that, as I mentioned, this show and other Club Twit shows are available to you as video, not just audio. So consider joining the club to get all of that fun and also to help support us uh, in doing what we do. We appreciate each and every one of you Club Twit members who are not hearing this if they're listening later because it's part of the Club Twit promo. But for those of you listening live, that is to you. Thank you. Um, if folks want to f uh, follow you online and find out all the great work you're doing, Rosemary Orchard, where should they go to do that? Uh, the best place to go is to my website, rosemaryorchard.com, which has links to uh, social media, books, podcasts, apps, et cetera, um, that I have created or taken a hand in creating or maintaining uh, around the internet. And of course, you can find me in the Club Twit Discord, hanging out in the live chat during the show and uh, checking out the uh, iOS a day forums in the Discord uh, after the show, because some folks post some great questions in there. What about you, Micah? You can find me at Micah Sargent on many a social media network, or you can head to chihuahua.coffee, that's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, where I've got links to the places I'm most active online. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you again next week for another episode of iOS Today. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, folks.